This is part six in the Craftsman King Sealy three-wheel bandsaw rebuild series. If you haven't seen part five, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we're going to be priming and painting all of the parts, and we're going to be assembling the power panel. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff, and welcome to my shop. we got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. In part five, I masked off all of the parts that were getting painted. So the first thing we're going to be doing is applying a self-etching primer. I like the Rust-Oleum Automotive self-etching primer. And you can pick it up at just about all your big box stores, automotive stores, Walmart. But I just shoot this stuff on. One coat is enough, and I'll set it aside to let it dry. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to dry to the point that you can handle it. And that's also the window that I start painting usually. So for parts that are big, like this frame, I'll shoot one side of it, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then I'll flip it over and shoot the other side. And here we're uh, painting or priming the base for the pedestal. And then that's the top for the pedestal. I use wax paper on the uh, two by fours. And then this is one of the covers. And these are the end frames for the motor. And I've already flipped them over. So if this is the first video that you've seen of me painting or priming, uh, you'll probably notice that I, I spray a pretty heavy coat um, rather than a couple of light coats. Uh, I know that most people, when they apply spray paint and primer, they do it in several light coats but that's just not how i like to do it so this is my technique it works for me may not work for you having a lazy susan inside my paint booth is really handy though it allows me to get a big piece like this in there and then rotate it as i need to And then this is me applying a black gloss. Uh, this is an, a, a black gloss enamel. It's an Ace Hardware uh, spray paint. It's their own internal or house brand. 
I like their paint, so it's what I use. Um, so I'm just doing the inside of the covers in black. I'm not spraying the outside at all. And if I have a little bit of overspray, that's not a problem because we'll be painting the outside a different color anyways. But for both covers, And then I did the frame in gloss black as well. And these are the only three pieces that got the gloss black. And then it was time to spray the gold. So this is a hammered gold. It's a Rust-Oleum hammered gold finish. And the paint number is 7210. And I, all of my tools that I keep, this is the color I paint them. And we're just doing the inside of the uh, end frames for the motor. And then we'll flip them and do the other side. Now with this paint, I usually let it cure for about 72 hours uh, before I really handle it. Uh, I'm going to be doing some masking on the base for the uh, pedestal. And uh, I don't want to take the paint off when I remove that masking. So uh, I usually wait about a week to do those parts. And this is the other color I use. This is a leather brown. It's also an Ace Hardware brand enamel. And it's just a regular gloss paint. It's not hammered or anything like that. And I'm gonna paint pretty much all those hanging pieces that you can see there are gonna be this leather brown. So here we are just removing the masking. Typically, I like to remove the masking about an hour after something has been painted. I don't like it to sit with masking on it for a long period of time. Otherwise, when you go to pull the masking off after a couple of days, you might end up taking some of the paint along the edges of it with it. And these are the end frames for the motor. And here we are. This has been about a week and we're going to mask the areas of the base for the pedestal that are not going to get painted brown. Really just that big rectangle area is going to get painted brown. And then I'm also going to mask off the inside of the front cover. It has a lip that hangs over on over the back cover and I want to paint that inside of that lip gold as well so it's not black. Probably wouldn't be able to see it anyways but yeah no big deal. So here I am just painting that lip about an inch down all the way around. And I didn't do this when I was painting my 12 inch two wheel bandsaw and on the back side you can you can see the inside color so 
and then this is me just shooting the leather brown on the base. And here we are removing the masking. And so this is about half an hour to an hour after these pieces were painted. So they may still be a little tacky. So I'm just carefully removing that so that I'm not touching the painted area or dragging any of this masking tape or the wax paper across any of the painted areas. It gives me a nice crisp line. Not anything exciting, just removing masking. And we'll see if I can avoid scratching that inside all up when I go to install all the uh, parts that need to go in here. And then we're just going to remove the masking on the base. And I've got the masking that we originally did on the inside of those bores that I need to get out of there as well. All right, so here we are to assemble the power panel. So we're just snapping in the receptacles and then I need to fabricate a bracket uh, that goes on the inside because the bottom receptacle, the hole is wider than the receptacle is. So I'm going to fabricate kind of a U-shaped bracket here out of a piece of, uh, piece of steel I got from Home Depot. It's not very thick. It's the same steel I use to uh, make the stator bands for motors. So after we cut it out, we're just sanding it, getting all those edges deburred and... Uh, finishing up the shaping of it. And then we can just lay it in there and put that metal or uh, the male receptacle in there and the two metal side clips that are on it will hold that L or that U-shaped bracket inside the power panel. Like so. Now I've got two holes above the other two receptacles there and I've fabricated this other piece of steel and it's just slightly bigger than it needs to be by like a 32nd. So when I wedge it in there, it'll stay in there just fine. Next thing, we're going to go ahead and install the decal that Matt Blast from Garage Journal made for me. And it's that simple.
Let me just make sure the switch fits in there just fine without pushing up on the decal. We're good to go. All right, so the wiring. Now I'm gonna do a couple of cut scenes here because I'm not gonna make you watch me wire this entire thing, but basically I'm I'm using the original switch that came with this. And I've got the two female receptacles that are in there are Chinese made, I guess, because I don't know what the heck is going on with those wire colors, but the yellows, for some reason, are the grounds. The blacks on those two are the common, and the reds are the load. And you can probably hear my dog chewing on a bone in the background of some of this. Sorry about that. I don't know what kind of wire color convention that is, but in any case, all we're doing is wiring this thing up basically exactly like it was before, except with three grounds. And that's the whole reason we did this was to make it a grounded uh, power panel. And we'll go ahead and install that uh, additional bracket or shim that I made. And line up the switch. And we can install that front cover on the switch itself. So that space where the switch has got to fit between those two female receptacles is really tight. And off camera, I had to come in with a Dremel and take a little bit of plastic off of those two female receptacles to get that switch to lay between them. But no big deal. And and we can lay everything down in there and attempt to squeeze this thing together. And I've got to really play with it to get it to close up. Since it's such a tight fit for that switch. But I eventually get it closed up. I've got a thread on Garage Journal Forum about the power panel. If you want to know more about the wiring and Frank Lee just recently did one uh, where he converted it over to a grounded circuit and I like his assembly much better than how I do it and that should wrap up this video I hope you enjoyed it I hope you learned something if you did please like and subscribe I can use all the support that I can get as always I appreciate it and I will see you next time.